Okay. So you might have heard people talk about the gut brain connection. It's one of the most popular topics in wellness at the moment, and it's also one of the most misunderstood. I'm Christopher Gabriel, the founder of Life Science Performance, and in this episode, I'm cutting through the noise to look at what the science actually tells us about the gut microbiome, how it impacts our nervous system, mental health, and overall well-being, and what you can do to keep it healthy. So to begin with, your gut and brain are in constant conversation. This communication happens through multiple pathways the vagus nerve, immune signaling, hormones, and even microbial metabolites like short-chain fatty acids. Inside your gut, there are trillions of microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Collectively, it's what we call the microbiome. These microbes aren't just sort of passive passengers. They produce neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine and GABA, as well as uh, influence inflammation, immune balance, and energy metabolism. But here's where the misinformation often creeps in. You might hear claims like 90% of serotonin is made in the gut, which is partly true, but that serotonin isn't directly crossing into the brain. It influences gut motility and immune communication, which indirectly affect mood and behavior through the vagus nerve and systemic signaling. So yes, the gut can absolutely shape how you feel, but not because bacteria are controlling your brain. It's a complex feedback loop that involves the enteric nervous system, endocrine signaling, and immune modulation. Okay. Myth number one, everybody needs probiotics. The truth is not necessarily. The best evidence shows that probiotics can help after antibiotics or during gut dysbiosis. But the effect depends on the strain, the dose, and individual microbiome diversity. A generic capsule won't fix everything. Myth number two, you can reset your gut in three days. I've heard this a lot. The truth is you can influence your microbiome quickly through your diet, but sustained diversity takes weeks to months of consistent nutrient-rich eating. There's no shortcuts. It's about steady input, not quick cleanses. Myth number three, Fermented foods or fiber alone can solve gut issues. The truth is fermented foods like yogurt, kimchi, and kefir are helpful, but they work best alongside prebiotic fibers, adequate sleep, movement, and nervous system regulation. The microbiome responds to the entire ecosystem of your lifestyle. Now let's talk about how to maintain a healthy gut. And first, let's talk about what actually supports a healthy microbiome. Here's what's consistently been shown in the research. Number one, diversity of plants. We want to aim for about 30 plus different plant foods a week. That's fruits, vegetables, herbs, nuts, seeds, and legumes. More diversity equals more microbial diversity. The second is prebiotic fiber. Feed beneficial bacteria with foods like garlic and onions, leeks, asparagus, oats, and green bananas. These fibers are fermented in the colon to produce what's called short chain fatty acids like butyrate, which reduce inflammation and strengthen the gut lining. Polyphenols are the next one. These are plant compounds that you find in berries and olive oil, green tea, and dark chocolate. Nourish specific bacterial species linked to the brain and health by eating these foods. Number four, probiotic foods. Fermented foods like kefir, yogurt, kimchi, sauerkraut, and miso 
um, can improve microbial resistance and reduce markers of inflammation. Number five, consistent sleep and stress regulation. Circadian rhythm and nervous system state directly affect your goat motility and microbial balance. Chronic stress increases intestinal permeability and inflammation. So nervous system regulation through breath work, movement, and recovery matters just as much as food. Number six, moderate exercise. Regular movement increases microbial diversity, believe it or not, as well as gut blood flow. You can think of exercise as another way of feeding your microbiome. Now, let's switch gears and talk a little bit about the gut and well being. The gut brain access is a two way relationship. When your gut is balanced, inflammation is lower, neurotransmitter signaling is smoother, and stress hormones are more stable. You feel clearer, calmer, and more emotionally resilient. And the reverse is true. When stress and poor sleep dominate, the gut becomes less diverse, more permeable, and more inflamed. That imbalance feeds back into our mood, focus, and energy. This is why in my practice, gut health isn't treated as an isolated problem. It's a foundational system for mental, physical, and emotional regulation. When you align nutrition, nervous system health, and lifestyle, you create that feedback loop that moves in the right direction towards stability, clarity, and long-term vitality. So to summarize, your microbiome is this vast ecosystem. It's not really something to fix, but instead something to cultivate, feed it variety and rhythm and calm, and it will return the favor with resilience and clarity. If this helped you better understand the science behind the gut brain access, please subscribe for more on integrative nutrition, nervous system health, and longevity science. I'm Christopher Gabriel, and this is Life Science Performance, where we integrate biology and behavior to build lasting well-being.